So yeah, over to you. Thank you. Um, so the presentation and this work is collaborative endeavor between the four of us, but it's only Sean and myself that are here today. Um, so hopefully we'll do justice to the work we are doing collaboratively together. Um, I'm very excited because the first two talks was so well suited as a kind of primer to, to our discussion. Um, not, not least the last talk talked so much about the kind of the theoretical grounding of some of this work. Our presentation is about giving you some an overview of what we can do to develop the artistry of teaching um, and what we can learn from improv and from the teaching of improv theater in, in that context. So, so we'll tell you a little story about our improvisation skills for teaching program at UE Bristol. That's a collaborative program with the Bristol Improv Theater. So the program is delivered um, by teachers from the Bristol Improv Theater. And um, Sean will share with you some of our evaluations in terms of what participants gain from these workshops and also what happens of, um, in the context of transferring that uh, learning um, into practice. So, um, so there would be a story about, um, about that. So what is our Improvisation Skills for Teaching program? The Improvisation Skills for Teaching program um, consists of two sets of three workshops um, as, a, as a main core of this program. Um, and it's been very interesting um, to read, read some of the chat, uh, some of the chats and asking about the juxtapositions about persona and collaborative learning environments. And actually, our program has two aims that integrate those two aspects uh, quite beautifully. One of our aims is to improve student engagement and participation in the classroom. And the second one is about applying lessons from the improv theater and from the theater arts in terms of how we can improve our communication, delivery, and facilitation skills. So we have three workshops that focus on each. Um, as the program progressed, we realized um, that actually, as I knew from, from some of my um, other work on program leaders, is that actually transferring learning into practice is a, a learning process in, in itself, and we needed to facilitate that, so we introduced two coaching workshops. The, um, we launched this program in April 2021. It is in total eight two and a half hour workshops. Um, the numbers that I've given you there is uh, from June 2022. We're just in the middle of our next delivery, so we are reaching nearly 400 attendances and around 200 um, individuals at the university. An important framing in terms of staff development, and Anna talked about what staff development is and educational development, is that we say we're not teaching you how to, how to teach, um, but we're here to offer two tools and techniques. Um, and I actually tools and techniques, I can talk about this in the question and answer session. I sometimes feel we um, we don't focus that much on the skills, the tools and techniques in some of our educational development work, and maybe we should do more of that. Um, the workshops are accompanied by a workbook. Um, I do not have control over the slides, I'm afraid. Um, so, um, and the workbook is really showcasing the different activities that we engage participants with during the workshop. And these are the activities that we um, showcase to them and we ask them to consider if and how they might include this, these activities in their practice. And it's a workbook because we offer space for reflection, also time for re reflection in the workshops. So what are we going to talk to you next on the next slide? Um, I, I have the realm of concepts that we introduced in these th uh, two sets of three workshops. On the left hand side, the three columns in blue, we talk about the concepts we introduce into how do you create and foster an, a, an environment for your students where students are happy to participate. We kind of assume and say, well, why, why are students not participating? You actually need to foster and create the space and model um, and, 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 and scaffold that. 
And on the right hand side, we have the three columns which are around that idea of perf performance and how we can embody some of the learnings from the theatre arts. What I would say is even though we offer three workshops on this, this can be a lifelong journey. For example, how to use your voice, authenticity, play, um, again, charisma, persona, etc. These are not built um, um, in an instance. I'll pass now on to Sean, who is just going to overview what happens in terms of how participants experience these workshops. Sean. Hi, everyone. Um, thanks, Petia. So uh, just a very, very quick introduction to myself. So I'm Sean Mudd um, and for the duration of this program, uh, I've also been running uh, as kind of program leader uh, our postgraduate certificate in academic professional practice at UWE. Um, and part of the reason that I got involved in this is kind of what Petty was saying earlier. Um, I had suspicions as well. There was something missing from our PG cert. Um, part of this was the, the kind of practical skills and things that people immediately need to do um, when they start teaching to get some confidence and get some ability to look after their voice and so on. Um, and on the other side um, was kind of team building or ice breaking. Um, it's quite intimidating to come to these classes and having something like this earlier on the programme, I thought would be lovely. So my initial start was that I got involved uh, effectively kind of commissioning some of this stuff and then working to develop it. Um, and then more recently, of course, we've gone through this process of more formal review and evaluation to see what's working and see what we can improve and see what we can disseminate more broadly. Um, these word clouds here um, hopefully are quite useful just as a quick skim. Um, this is this is pulling together um, our feedback over the last three years or so. Uh, and the feedback forms we do after every session. Um, hopefully you can see the kind of themes that are coming out of here at a glance. I think the ones that I pick out, are, there's a theme around tools, ideas and techniques, those kind of tangible things that people are getting to put into their practice. Um, the second part there I think is to do with engagement, students, rapport, so that kind of building a community or, or building an environment. Um, there's some stuff there around voice and practice, uh, so the kind of things that people are doing um, as teachers uh, to help their practice. Um, and online comes out as well. Um, when we started this program, uh, it was initially a response to the kind of COVID environment um, and how do people create the kind of learning environments they're used to in an online sphere. Um, since then, we found it works both online and face to face, but it's still really useful in that online online context. Um, could I ask for the next slide, please? So what we've been doing over the last uh, few months is we've been doing some more formal uh, evaluation and research through focus groups of people that have been through our program. Um, I've got about three slides here where I'm just drawing out some of the themes. Uh, one of the things we were really interested to look at was the motivation of people coming to these sessions. Um, so not going to read through the quotes in detail, but I think the kind of three maybe key themes that I'm drawing out here, which tend to occur repeatedly. Um, one is that top quote there where people have an idea that they they need to improve or they need to develop as a, as a, as a lecturer or a HE teacher, um, but they don't know how to do it and what we were providing wasn't quite meeting that need and they, they couldn't quite find what they need to do. And this seemed to fill that gap there. It's still very difficult to kind of tease out these intangible things about what we exactly did and what helped them, um, but there does seem to be a perception that it has helped them. Um, the second quote there, presentation skills. So I'm sure this surprises nobody. Um, by having these performing arts experts that are used to working with people from industry and practice coming in, um, it does help people in that in that kind of way. And the third and fourth one, um, people want it to be more spontaneous, less reliant on plans, more adaptable to what's happening in the classroom and more flexible. Um, the bottom one in particular, the fourth quote there, um, is a really nice one because it also um, kind of hits on happy fail and that kind of idea that's okay to get things wrong, uh, both in the student perspective and, and their perspective as well. Um, if I could do the next slide, please. And then two very quick slides here on the benefits So the other side. Um, we're asking people that have been through at least one, uh, probably most of the, the workshops on our programme, uh, and what the benefits they got from this, this programme were and what affected uh, or impacted on their practice. Um, the first quote there is something around um, challenging preconceptions, so getting people to think more deeply, explore things they might not otherwise do. Um, the second and third one I think are quite pivotal as well. Um, a lot of people are talking about confidence. Uh, and courage and the ability to try new things, which kind of resonates with the first quote as well. Um, we think that's really key. Um, the program's helping to, to kind of do that and help people to build on that. Um, and we're doing more of that in the in the final workshops uh, where we're, we're thinking about coaching. Um, the fourth one there, um, I really like this quote. Uh, it's somebody at a light bulb moment uh, in these focus groups and realizing that um, although they signed up to improv and improv sounds quite spontaneous, um, part of this is thinking about how to plan that spontaneity and how to make room for that spontaneity. So in that sense, the improvisation is actually a planned activity. Um, and the next slide, please. 
Um, there's some stuff here which were less expected. Uh, so points two, uh, put, sorry, quotes one and two, uh, we had several people saying about how um, they use this in their teaching teams uh, to develop a kind of shared terminology and shared approach among modules, among programs, and that seemed to be an area where it worked particularly well. Um, so entire teams coming to these workshops and talking about it and unpacking it afterwards. Um, the third one, uh, we had a participant uh, who really articulated how it was good for their mental health, um, not just their students, but their particular mental health as well. Um, I think that was particularly prevalent as well during COVID, during that kind of isolating period for many staff. Um, the fourth one is that uh, most of our participants uh, really liked our resources, in particular our worksheets. Uh, so the kind of thing we showed you above where we're having those really quick one page summaries of activities. Um, if I can pass back over to Petia now uh, for the next slide. Sean, um, I've seen that one heart, so I'll be quick. This is just to demonstrate that what what we did with this program is not only saying there are, there is stuff that we can learn as teachers in terms of, in terms of the performance, the improvisation, uh, and all the concepts that we we've spoken about in the three, previous two presentations, but also there's a lot to learn from the expertise about teaching improvised theatre and the teaching improv theatre um, and the skill set that is bound in that really vulnerable space getting novices to improvise. Um, so if we just go to the next slide, this is our concluding slide, um, just kind of drawing on some of the, um, the, the key themes here. Um, it is actually the first three workshops particularly recognise that the, it we need to engage in a deliberate practice to create a positive learning environment and kind of acknowledge and attend to emotions in the classroom. Um, we, we cannot enter a classroom and anticipate that there would be a particular classroom environment. Um, these workshops really encourage people to experiment, fail, try again, and almost created that institutional context where colleagues who attended these workshops felt that it's okay to try. Um, the care and empathy was a strong theme that came in the previous two talks. It's a it's a core part, part of teaching and it's core part, part of being an, an improviser um, and performing art skills. There are skills that actually really help and help the mental health of participants, but they need to be taught. Uh, we are not all born with with them. Um, and I think uh, that I'll conclude uh, there. Uh, on the next slide, so there's a number of, of hi hyperlinks uh, to some resources, including an hour conversation recorded with uh, Helen and I about the theoretical framing and the background of this work, inclu including some participants' um, conversations on YouTube. Uh, thank you. I'll, I'll close it here. Brilliant. Thanks, Katia and Sean. Really fascinating stuff. Um, I need to come and chat to you more and take some of this stuff into, into what I've been doing. Um, Good. So yeah, a round of applause or hearts, whatever you want to, want to share. Um, so there's been Thanks, um, some interesting uh, comments and, and chats in the, the chat box. So um, some some discussion around um, uh, the concept of a medley in the middle being between the kind of traditional sage on the stage and the, the guide on the side, which we can perhaps pick up on um, throughout the, um, the sessions today and, and in the watch parties. Um, you said, Petia, you wanted to say a bit more about the, the kind of tools and techniques um, that you use. Would you like to use a bit of time in this, this time now? To um, yes, well, first of all, to do my preachy thing, <laughs> which is what uh, Sean was alluding to. Um, I, I'm a strong believer in the post postgraduate certificate in academic practice and what and how we teach th teach there. I think they're very important. It, it's, um, it's quite important. But we often don't equip colleagues with tools and techniques to survive their first session, to survive their first year in, in teaching. The uh, What is an icebreak exercise? How do you energize a room if you're halfway through a three hour session? Um, what are the tools, techniques? What are the ways of framing and thinking that you can do we, you can do in that context? So this this program was very much designed to fill in that space. I think there there are aspect of what is to be an expert teacher and what it is to be a skillful teacher. Um, I think um, <laughs> I saw Sue in the background. We've been doing some work um, based on Christopher War um, Winch's um, um, framing of the professional uh, development and professional curriculum. Uh, you know, skillful performance is being able to perform in a, a particular skill in different environments. 
um, well and to, to be able to dance and to be able to dance skillfully is very different as um, people might have seen on, on his strict recount dancing. Um, so so the I really am very passionate that we make space for that skills development and the impact uh, in terms of the mental health as well as colleagues saying actually I do have an engaged classroom my students turn their cameras on we do have a laugh and it's 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 very helpful um is is to me it's fundamental so so my big question is Yes, there's the scholarly theoretical and a kind of Anna Stock was very inspirational in terms of unpacking all the concepts in there. But it's also about as educational developers, what space we still need to make to fully empower academic staff. Um, but in terms of particular tools and techniques we teach, um, I think that will be a conversation that you, <laughs> we will need to have with us outside of this setting. Um, so uh, we are all very happy to be contacted, including Imogen and Stephen. So um, so just get in touch. And yes, uh, Richard, I've been long aware we need to <laughs> connect as well. Great, thank you. Um, another question from uh, Samuel Elkington, which is an interesting one I haven't really thought of. So the extent to which improvisation as a mm. art form is performance based in itself. Um, Oof. There it's it's interesting. Um, as a side piece, I am also an improviser, um, so so I have uh, I have that 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 background and context. It's it is a performance piece, and actually, at the moment, I'm thinking I don't have those acting skills in terms of the performance element, but the aspect of improvisation, which is being fully present in a moment, attending to the other person noticing, collaborating, building something together, making sure that that uh, interaction is safe and you are within each other's, you know, you're not crossing on each other's boundaries. That is very much an inter interactional skill that is separate from I'm on a stage and I'm also making a performance and I'm also engaging with the audience. And I think that's why um, this program has been really exciting to me because it does attend to the fact that you need to know how to use your voice if you want to keep your voice after 40 years of teaching large classrooms, particularly if there's no mics, etc. But you also, th there is a skill set there around empathy, about less active listening, about creating that safe space that comes from the improviser skill set more so potentially than the actor skill set. Of course, Actors would fully disagree with me um, and they'll they'll throw minds at me and say, no, acting is about um, noticing. And that's absolutely true. But with improv, you're just taking that one notch further. Mm 